Every time I walk this field, every time that we water it, I ride through it, I just always wonder in the future, how many lives are we gonna to touch with my crop? That's an incredible feeling. The oleander is a very unique plant. It has a number of properties. Uh, each one is continuing to amaze us. Offhand, I can't, can't think of anything that has uh, so many uses in such an effective way. I mean, you can go through your whole life and never come across something this powerful, uh, something that will change the world as much as Miriam. Understanding that there's a lot of research going into this plant on the potential of what it's going to do in the future. The research scientists from the different universities have been out here and understanding what they're trying to achieve and where they are today, there is no question in my mind that this field is much more than a field of dreams. It's truly a field of life. When they came along with penicillin, when they came along with aspirin, when they came along with these medicines, digitalis, for heart disease, it came from a simple plant that became earth-changing. And Nerium oleander is the same type product. Some of our drugs, uh, such as Taxol, comes from the Chinese yew tree, aspirin from the willow tree, um, digitalis, which is used for congestive heart failure, comes from the uh, foxglove. And so Nerium oleander is another one of these plants that has some pretty unique properties. Uh, and the oleander plant uh, is known pretty widely for being somewhat uh, dangerous or toxic or whatnot, and the reason for that is because it has uh, cardioglycosides, the same kind of product that's in digitalis. Various species of uh, Nerium oleander have been used uh, for quite a while as an ornamental bush in Asia, uh, southern United States, and in the Mediterranean uh, region. It really is quite a lovely plant. And interestingly, over the last 1,500 years or more, uh, extracts of this plant uh, have been used for medicinal purposes uh, all the way from uh, its use as a diuretic, um, cardiovascular disease, and certain skin applications as well. The uh, plant uh, contains cardiac glycosides, and of course it is a toxic plant, so safety has always been at the forefront as we develop these compounds. In 1775 in England, Dr. William Withering uh, was treating patients for a syndrome known as dropsy. He was actually using foxglove, which is uh, from a traditional garden, uh, for treatment of his patients. We now know that andropsy is another name for congestive heart failure, uh, and that foxglove contains cardiac glycosides, a very interesting series of compounds also present in Nerium oleander. Going back in history, like I say, it's been used for a number of years, or 15 centuries, but uh, Dr. Ozelis, who I would give credit to for kind of rediscovering this compound, uh, Dr. Ozell was a Turkish doctor. He experimented with several extraction methods, uh, treated patients, published those, um, and pushed some of the research forward. Looking back in the literature, which really extends back many centuries, uh, it has been used or uh, indicated in various writings um, for skin care. They would appear for use of, of abscesses and boils, uh, various other abnormalities uh, in skin tissue uh, where the nerium oleander would be applied as a poultice. So again, very, very interesting from a historical perspective. Uh, we're now seeing those effects in a scientific manner in a clinical trial, um, so what is old is new again. Interestingly, around 1998, I began to hear reports of uh, a strange potential, an unusual potential for Nerium oleander and extracts of that plant. Uh, most of this came from uh, stories from a, an Irish uh, clinician, Dr. Patrick Kelly in Limerick, Ireland, who in his clinic uh, was seeing a um, rather exciting uh, responses in his patients. In 1998, I had a chance to meet with Dr. Kelly and review some of those records, uh, and indeed found a great deal of potential uh, interesting responses in his patients, and the data looked interesting as well. Well, I'd had an opportunity to see um, some of the papers, case studies of Dr. Kelly, actually some of the patients that he treated, and that kind of intrigued me. It looked very, very promising at that point. And of course, coming out of um, you know, historical use and folklore, uh, what it lacked was the science. 
and so we had to determine why it worked. If all you have are anecdotal stories, people instantly doubt you and, and will take shots at you. If you have the science to back up your anecdotal stories, that becomes a whole different deal. The research that Dr. Newman's done now in this arena, he's, he's had at least a dozen publications. There's more in the works at this point. Research continues for different properties. Uh, the original compound has gone through an FDA phase one safety trial. There's a second compound that uh, has gone through a, a, the safety trials at MD Anderson, and there's more coming at this point. Our interest in natural products uh, and towards the, the latter part of my career at MD Anderson was somewhat controversial. At the time, everybody was interested in targeted therapies and the belief that um, serious um, diseases really was due to one specific defect in an enzyme or protein or even a specific molecular pathway. Uh, we now realize this was uh, perhaps a naive uh, concept in that most serious diseases, like malignant diseases, are actually uh, due to multiple defects, um, be they mutations, proteins, enzymes, or multiple pathways. Finding one pharmaceutical drug to effectively treat that is unlikely, possible but unlikely. It seemed to me at the time that a much more effective uh, application would be in extracts of potent natural products. Uh, we became interested in Nerium oleander for its reported use. And I think one finding excited us even more than the next in terms of its potential utility application over a wide variety of cancers. Uh, and now we're finding, to my surprise, that extracts of Nerium oleander have a wide utility, but in areas of neurodegenerative disease, uh, certainly antiviral activity, uh, and in skin care as well, being effective against numerous skin conditions. So today, there have been two clinical studies that have been conducted with extracts of Nerium oleander, and there are plans for a third. Uh, let me briefly review these for you. Uh, the first one was done at Cleveland Clinic, a, a noted institute famous for its uh, heart care, among other things. The extract was given by an intramuscular route. Um, no toxicities were observed. Uh, but in fact, and the trial was a little disappointing in that the major limiting toxicity was the amount of volume that they were injecting intramuscularly. Um, that was followed up by our development of a very potent concentrated extract of Nerium oleander that was specifically formulated for oral absorption. That is, we could give it as an oral medication. We decided to conduct this at this country's largest cancer research hospital, which is MD Anderson Cancer Center, a part of the University of Texas. That trial just recently finished. It took over three years and involved nearly 40 patients. Uh, we were gratified to see, on the one hand, and that we had stable disease and some partial responses as well, which is extremely gratifying and un unexpected. On the other hand, we saw no evidence of cardiovascular toxicity at all. And we were specifically looking for this injury. So what we ended up with, and just recently reported at the American Society of Clinical Oncology in Chicago, uh, a meeting of clinical oncologists in this country was uh, what was what is our belief is an effective treatment that's new and different uh, and can be given safely without serious side effects. The third clinical trial is um, also to be conducted at uh, the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. In addition to its potential use as a standalone or single therapy, we're greatly interested in the potential use of Nerium oleander extracts in combination with standard of care chemotherapy, that is, established drugs used for this. Uh, we're now preparing through Nerium Biotechnology an application to the FDA to do this trial, which is already funded. Uh, this will be done in patients with lung cancer, uh, being treated with standard of care therapies for lung cancer, but to which an extract of Nerium oleander will be added. At this point, we're very positive about what we're seeing, and of course, all the research will be peer reviewed and published at some point at the appropriate time in the future. Thank you.
There's well over a thousand different uh, varieties of uh, the oleander plant. Um, Nerium oleander is one particular um, species and that is grown, as I mentioned, in Asia, southern United States as an ornamental bush and the Mediterranean. Uh, I think it is particularly uh, important that one uses a dedicated uh, field grown in an organic-like manner for this. My name is Joel Curtis and this orchard was established over a decade ago as a research orchard. My background primarily is agriculture. I have, I have, my major is entomology. I have a minor in chemistry and horticulture. Now, understand that this is the only type of orchard like this in the world. We are specifically designing equipment that will harvest these. There's no such thing as oleander equipment. You just don't go down to your local implement dealer and say, show me your best oleander equipment. It's not there. This particular farm uh, where the oleander plant is raised is dedicated to this purpose. It's an environmentally friendly, no, no pesticides are used. We're primarily after the leaves. And that's the reason why we, we do not want any irrigation water. We do not want any type of chemicals nothing on the leaves. Um, and the leaves are harvested, um, they are milled in a specific manner, uh, dried and then ground to a fine powder. Um, we think this is important from a quality control uh, point of view, um, but we were also concerned with lot-to-lot -lot analyses and variability. Uh, so it is a very uh, specialized approach. Uh, it's extremely laborious and it's very, very expensive. Crop. The investment that we've made in this farm, in our people, in our manufacturing, uh, and the, the research uh, all adds to that quality and uh, we're, we're very, very sensitive to quality controls. I mean this, this compound is just not something you're going out there and taking some plant, making an extract. It's not that simple. Well it's taken us 10 years to get where we are. And, and the improvements come slowly and gradually and only with a whole lot of attention and concentration and the right people doing it. Somebody coming in and, and becoming a, a competitor to us isn't something that I even think about. Uh, it's, it's, it's just too far down the road. Well, they're, they're not going to knock it off because they, they've got a 10 year, they're 10 years behind. I mean, they're going to have to go out and start doing, you know, all the research themselves. A lot of the stuff involved here has is, is already been patented. And there's stuff that, if the stuff that hadn't been patented, there's patents pending. Uh, so again, for someone to try to reproduce this, I think would be extraordinarily difficult. It's not that easy to get involved in this industry. Uh, it's very complex. There's a lot of science that goes into it. Science not only starting at the field itself, but all the way through the processing as well as to the end user. So it's an extremely complex, uh, dynamic approach. It's, it's just a long, slow process. The biotech business doesn't just happen overnight. It, it takes a lot of work and a lot of money. Recently, we've uh, filed a patent, both in the U.S. and internationally, on a new extraction process. I developed it using aloe vera as the extracting medium. Uh, we ended up with much better extractions than we ever thought we would, as a matter of fact. Thought, I thought it would be better than any of the other things we tried, but it, it blew us away. It was more than that. What we're doing here is we're using pure liquid aloe vera to extract from the nerium oleander plant. And uh, of course, the result of this is we are obtaining the beneficial properties of the nerium oleander, the components we look for, and as well, we have the known beneficial properties of aloe. So another area of exciting research that, um, quite frankly, I never anticipated when I first began research with Mary Boldeander has to do with skin applications. Uh, we've since done some nice research with a, um, an outfit in San Francisco known as ST&T uh, Consultants. Um, and there we've taken a look at the utility of Miriam Oleander extracts. Again, this particular aloe vera Miriam Oleander combination uh, and its application in skin conditions, uh, even including such things as wrinkles. 
The company first came to us and wanted to know if their product was safe and effective. Uh, this is almost um, six years ago. I can say that um, you know, everything about the study, from the planning to the design to the execution, was very well worked. This 35 patient study, we wanted to see if the product would affect, have an effect on uh, uh, lines, uh, pigmentation, and uh, the smoothing of the skin. And in my review of the data, uh, almost in every single case, uh, there is rather dramatic improvement uh, in the digital imaging that we're seeing. Uh, and certainly the subjects, the volunteers in these studies are um, raving about the results that they're seeing as well, even though they had no clue as to the identity of the product that was involved. So one thing that's clear to me as we explore the application of products of Nerium biotechnology like Nerium AD and this application for skin care and health is the fact that we are not simply chasing subjective changes in the way that individuals feel about their appearance. In point of fact, we are going after a scientific uh, evaluation of skin care through the digital imaging and the specific recording of changes that actually do occur in individuals one by one, line by line, wrinkle by wrinkle. So this is the facial stage system. It was designed to go along with the Clarity Pro R&D software package. And the system itself allows for repeatable positioning so that images can be taken in a consistent manner across multiple time points. The Clarity Pro system has been around for the last five years, so it is fairly new measurement science technology for the cosmetic and skincare industry. In terms of imaging units, there have been several photographic systems used by the industry over the last uh, 20 years or so. But what's really unique about the Clarity Pro R&D system is the facial recognition and skin segmentation technology. It'll identify 30 different parameters on the face and it will um, give you feedback and you know real data. The system measures over 30 different skin parameters. So that we can actually measure everything from under eye bags to curl of eyelashes and then going into larger features such as deep lines or folds of the skin and smaller wrinkles such as fine lines around the eyes, crow's feet for example, measuring the length and the severity of each line so you can actually track how it changes over the course of a treatment or use of product. That when I saw all the science that was put into it, how the uh, pictures were taken, how everything was studied to see how the product was working, I thought it was very impressive. I was blown away because uh, the activity that can be tested in the lab will give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. They can actually zero in on a wrinkle and tell you exactly how long it is, how deep it is, and everything else. Well, when you see that wrinkle begin to shorten, and when you see it begin to fill out over a period of time using this product, that, my man, is something that works. The results of the study showed that, on average, patients experienced a 24% improvement in the number of wrinkles and a 20% improvement in the overall complexion of their skin, meaning that their skin was measurably uh, smoother and more even in color. And I saw that some women, it was like in the 20%, which I thought was great, but then some women, it was up to the, like the 40% of reduction of lines and spots, uh, and I thought that that was very, very impressive. And we call it an age-defying treatment. Uh, it's actually a night cream. And um, the individuals in that trial have been amazed at what they've seen. Well, skin care is an interesting area um, as us aging baby boomers uh, move forward in our, our lifespans. Uh, we all are a little uh, subjective in terms of our appearance and uh, how we appear to the world. But um, uh, let me talk a little bit about the fact that it is a subjective uh, uh, appearance that we're mostly concerned about. Uh, and it is one thing to have a product that uh, individuals use on their skin and for them to claim or to think that actually their appearance is has been improved. 
um, it is really quite another to document uh, dramatic improvement through digital imaging um, before, during, and after treatment with a given skin care product. Uh, to me as a scientist, this really separates uh, the products that are being developed from a wide variety of other skin care products out there that rely upon merely subjective anecdotal responses. Based on what I've seen from our scans and our research and our um, participants that have, have been involved in this clinical research, it's unlimited. Of course, there are, there's so many potentials to the oleander plant that um, it, it, it's very hard not to chase rabbit trails, but, but to pick something. And I think the, the concept of picking the, uh, the skin care product first and taking it to the public market uh, seems like a very exciting idea. And the market for skin care is enormous. Uh, it's almost impossible to even project how successful we might be because the markets are so big. There's just no question that we're going to be successful. Back when Dr. Newman was doing research, uh, he had um, a couple medical directors show up at his facility and in his lab and uh, looking for what's new out there. And he shared some of the um, non-confidential data with them. And this was a um, you know, multi-billion dollar global company. And one of those directors said, or made the comment, that um, the dermal applications alone of this compound is worth more than their entire pipeline. So based on a comment like that, I would say it's huge. In the skincare area, certainly developing a product uh, and bringing it to market is something I had never done. And so every day when the pump works and we get the product out there and it's being tested and people are happy with it, uh, is a eureka moment for me. Um, we're about at the point where it's all coming together and it's going to be the first, we'll have the first commercial one out there. And uh, that's certainly something I'm really looking forward to, uh, knowing that the day after we launch that, we're gonna start the second product. Uh, but the second product will probably be easier than the first and the fifth will be easier than the fourth. Uh, so I'm looking forward to all of that. I think the potential is unlimited. Um, of course, it, it's going to require considerable research and, and many years, but the skincare product being the first product um, that, that they're taking to market, I believe that, that there'll be tremendous acceptance. You know, after our preliminary testing and safety testing and, and um, efficacy observations, uh, we've moved forward uh, to think about the marketing of some of our products. When I walked away from the first meeting with them, I thought, if this is real, if what they're telling me is true, and if the results can support what they're telling me is true, this could be a game changer, not in just skin, but in the entire direct sales industry. Um, but as we moved forward, we looked into the marketing process, and of course one of them was um, internet, uh, we set up our own distribution route that's, that's a very long process, can take a number of years. We looked at being an ingredient supplier, uh, we looked at infomercial, and uh, certainly everyone's aware of network marketing. Some of the biggest cosmetic companies in the world do that. Um, along the way though, uh, what really helped us make our decisions, we ran to a gentleman by the name of Jeff Olson. When we met, it was almost like synergy. Two minds creates a third more powerful mind. We immediately got along, we, we, we connected, and we realized working together, their strengths with my strengths, what we could do is, number one, build a brand around a product and a technology and a science and results, and then we could build a product category. Uh, and Jeff brings the knowledge, the background, the expertise, uh, the people that have been involved in that arena. He brings national and global reach um, you know, the opportunities there for us as a team are, are outstanding. We're looking forward to a um, tremendous partnership, a long line of products, successfully done, professionally done. Uh, we think we're going to bring a product line that will be beneficial to individuals and the end consumer. Uh, and, and the Nerium AD is truly a first of its kind. No one else has it. Edie bar the door. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. It really is.
we look forward to generate revenues for Nerium Biotechnology and, and uh, in this partnership, and that revenue will certainly go back into future research, not only in skin care, but all other areas. But my underlying love of this is not to make money. I've made plenty of money, and I'm sure with this company I'll make more money, but it's because I love the company. I love the product. I love what it can do for people, and the potential is unbelievable. If just 10% of it worked, there's no telling how many lives we'll touch and how many lives we're going to help. It's really a great opportunity. It's a great feeling to know that you're actually doing something good for people. There's a humanitarian aspect there. This um, this is a unique compound. You know, the Ethereum oleander is a unique plant, unique properties. Uh, I can't tell you how excited we are about the future.